somebody else? No. Well, you definitely take the cake there. <laughs> And hello, welcome, welcome everybody to the Small Biz Better Summit. Yes, I am smiling because we just had an amazing pregame with the amazing Susie Carter, who is joining us, the Profit Coach, uh, who <laughs> we've been over here dancing. We have been just having a great time here behind the scenes. Um, and I was just kind of kicking myself. I was like, oh, I should have recorded this because so many of you uh, that actually get to see the behind the scenes have commented. You love the behind the scenes. So I promise you, we're gonna be bringing you more behind the scenes in future summits. And this session uh, by popular demand, Susie had a great session last month on the uh, Power Your Profits part one, and also this month, Power Your Profits part two. And so many of you had questions for Susie, and now she's here live to answer your questions. So in the chat box, you'll be able to see over to your right of your screen. Oh, I guess on that, it'll be to your right, if I'm doing it right. Yeah, to the right of your screen, it's opposite. Um, what I'm trying to do on the right of your screen, uh, go ahead and enter your questions in the, um, in the chat box. You won't be able to see them, but we'll be able to see them on our end. So there's no need to enter them twice or anything like that. We will see them and we will get to as many as we humanly possibly can during our session today with Susie Carter. All right. And for those of you who don't know, or if you haven't watched the sessions that Susie has done previously uh, as part of these Small Biz Better Summits, Susie has been talking about the power of your profits. Uh, her, the author of the new book, best-selling, excuse me, author of the new book, Power Your Profits. You can check that out at PowerYourProfitsBook.com, PowerYourProfitsBook.com. And yes, profits is plural. So PowerYourProfitsBook.com. And we've been talking about the uh, some 10 assessment steps that you need to assess your business. And so before we get into those, Susie, uh, can you just read off those 10 assessments really quick? And we will, and if you don't, um, I have like, them okay, here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> of course I can. Let me get them out since I was not ready for that. <laughs> well, see, this is the stuff I should have done in the pregame. Right. I should have said, yeah, let's do that. But we were too, too busy having fun. Now we're going to recap, right? Just okay. a quick recap just for anybody who has not seen um, part one or part two or both. Uh, several of you uh, uh, look like new faces, which is great. No problem. Um, we just want to give you a quick two second recap of what we talked about. And then we're going to go ahead and get into the Q&A. I think it would be easier if we got into the Q&A and then I'll come back to the 10 steps. <laughs> Even better. I better be honest. I can multitask and pull those up. since. <laughs> Even better, because I still have some more of your introduction that I have not yet done yet. So okay. let me do some of that um, and while Susie gets those uh, those 10 uh, assessment points. And like I said, this is probably the stuff I should have done during the pregame when we were dancing. You if you weren't here for the pregame, you missed it. We were dancing. We were having a good time. Uh, very competitive dancing, too. It was it was awesome. Um, but for those of you who don't know the amazing Susie Carter, she is the profit coach and she has helped numerous businesses, not only reached six figure in their business, but also seven figure, even some eight figure businesses as well. She's helped at least, at least two businesses uh, reach the eight figure, the $10 million mark, which is just absolutely amazing. And part of her series with us is helping us see how do we develop or take our business from where we currently are to those six, seven and eight figure businesses as well. So we are super, super duper happy to have her here. I have now been a student and a partner with Susie Carter for going on five, almost six years. And it has been an amazing ride. Every time she speaks, I learn something new. I learn something tremendous. Uh, and it is absolutely, absolutely amazing. Okay, and, I'm ready. <laughs> well, I'm not finished with my introduction. Oh, so. sorry. I thought that was my, I thought it was a good pause to introduce me. Look. I was taking a breath. I mean, <laughs> and I, just, I know there's so much to share. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, let me give this whole, I have the scroll of stuff to read off of. But seriously, everyone, she has an amazing resume, an amazing, but not only amazing resume, an amazing person. Um, so the expertise is great, but if you meet someone with great expertise, but they don't have the humanity side, you still can't quite bond with them. You still quite, can't quite follow them. Susie has an immense amount of both expertise and humanity. So you are in for a great treat. And with that, Susie Carter, what are those 10 assessment points? 
So let's really look at what my goal in sharing this content was really to set your business up so it can become your cash machine, your ATM machine. I have a saying that uh, math is money and money is fun, but and all roads lead to money. And so when I'm looking at an assessment, I want to look at for your business, like do you, one of the first points is do you understand your ideal client? So many people just are trying to find clients, but they're not looking at who can really afford me, right? That's really important. Number two, we went over, do you have strong sales strategy online and offline? Number three was, do you have automatic follow-up sequences? Because we can't do all this hard work and then not have something to follow up with them in the behind the scenes. Number four was about creating a strong and effective lead magnet for list building, having clearly defined a product suite. What's your revenue will look like? Where is the money going to come from? How are you selling it? How much are you selling it for? And really leveraging that systematically versus just building a bunch of content. Creating a strong social media strategy. That's your calendars, your profiles, your engagements, your ads. What's your social media strategy? And all roads lead to money. And so do you have a clear marketing plan? Do we understand your pricing model and how you charge what you're worth? Do you have a strong back end to capture everything once you get it? And then last but not least, it's all about the money. What's that financial strategy you need to put in place, right? How many units do you need to sell? What's your average ticket going to be? What are we doing every single month? What are we doing every single quarter? And what are we doing for the year? So that was the 10 business assessments. And if you didn't see that, go back and watch that video. It was juicy, juicy, juicy. I've been teaching it for 25 years. It's a great, it's a great pulse indicator. Where am I at in my business right, me, right now? Kind of like when you go to the mall and you go look at the marquee and you're like, where's that little thing that says you are here? So I need to know where you are in your business so then we can really put an effective plan. Do you need to work on marketing? Do you need to work on sales? Do you need to work on the infrastructure? Do you need to work on finances? So that was our one of our lessons that we taught. Oh, I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for that recap. All right. So now we have several questions from you guys, for you guys and gals. Anytime I say guys, I mean it for guys and gals, but um, for you guys and gals. And this gives us an opportunity to go deep on several of the questions that you've been asking over uh, this session, the previous session, as well as the previous summit where Susie presented part one of the Power Your Profit session. So um, we're looking forward to that and we're going to jump right on in. And so some of the previous questions, uh, we did not get where they were from. Um, but when you enter your questions here in the chat and in the moderation, we'll see where you're from and we'll be able to uh, comment on those as well if you have questions. So, all right, starting first. Oh, I should have asked Susie, are you ready? I am ready. I think I'm ready until so you ask me something I don't know. And then I'm like, wait. <laughs> well, these are some pretty hard questions. I was like, huh? What do they mean by that? I'm teasing you. No, <laughs> even if there were hard questions, Susie would have no problem with them all. So, all right. Up first, we have, and I do apologize in advance. If I butcher your names, know that it is um, butchering out of love. <laughs> so, up first. <laughs> Uh, for, does that work, Susie? Not really. But I, love, but I, I feel your love. That's all I got. I feel your love. Okay. <laughs> awesome sauce. So up first, we have Seren. Seren asks, what would you recommend as a good way to come up with ideas for developing new products? Mm, that's a great question, Seren. So here's what I do. Now, when my, my youth, when I was a younger entrepreneur, <laughs> I didn't have a strategy around it, but I still did the same strategy. Clients would tell me what it is that they wanted from me. And I started listening. You know, um, they would say, hey, I would do a training and I would bring, let's say I have an SOP manual that has all the systems in my business. And they're like, oh, my gosh, can I buy that? I'm like, but it, it's mine. Like, why do you want mine? They're like, oh, my God, because it's a template. I'm like, well, how much would you pay for that? <laughs> So they go, okay, well, I think I'd pay under $1,000. I'm like, okay, $9.95. It's yours. <laughs> Literally at a training, I sold $25,000 worth of product that way because a client said, hey, can I buy that? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so you want to do market research and find out, one, when you're working with clients, or you're talking about your product, listen to the questions that they're asking, right? Listen for their concerns. Find the need, fill the need. Find the need, fill the need. So I want you to go do some market research, right? We call it focus groups, but you don't have to get all fancy with it. Just go ask people. So here's my topic. So for mine, my, one of my topic is 
you know, my, my main topic is planning for profit, right? My book is Power Your Profits. But inside that topic, I have many different programs. The difference in the program is access and touch, right? So for my one-on-one -on -one consulting, that's high access, high touch. For our global leadership program, that's a group training program for a year. They get online modules, they get mastermind calls, they get one-on-one -on -one calls with me, they get an accountability coach. So that's high access, high touch, and that's a different price point. And then I have an online course, which is no access, right? But juicy content. And then we have some lower end price content. So it's pretty much the same content, just packaged differently. We don't have to create a bunch of random stuff. Stay consistent to your message, whatever your message is. So really, I like to create what I call a product stack. What is the first product that I'm gonna offer? And then from that, how can I make derivatives of that product for different price points? Hmm. I love that. That's very similar to um, something we do uh, with repurposing content. Like a lot of people are like, hey, you know, I have this blog post and we're like, yeah, but I need to come up with X, Y, and Z. And we're like, okay, we can repurpose your blog post into several social media posts. We can repurpose it into some a series, a video series, blogs. We can really do a lot with repurposing. And that's very, very, see, that's why she's a genius, ladies and gentlemen. I'm like, that is so smart. You don't have to keep creating just profit coach. That's exactly why she is here <laughs> to help you profit that you don't even don't even realize you have. It's just kind of like one of those remote controls that are sitting right next to you or the remote control that's right beside you. Um, I love that. That is awesome. All right. And did I cut you off there, Susie, or were you done with uh, complete with that question? I was complete with Serene. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Serene, for that question. Up next, we have Maxwell. Maxwell asks, what is, what's the best way to assess your 2019 in preparation for your 2020? Mm, very great. This is a juicy one. So we just did this with all our global leadership students. And so a lot of times at the end of the year, I don't know if you're like this, Marcus, I'm definitely like this. I look at the end of the year, we always look at what we didn't do, right? Oh, I didn't run that campaign. Oh, I didn't create that product. Oh, I didn't create... I didn't make the, my financial goal. Oh, I didn't get as many customers in my database. Oh, I didn't start that podcast. Oh, you know, this is the stick you keep beating yourself up with. That's just my visual. <laughs> so we beat ourselves up from what we didn't do. So I want to get that out of the way. Write down everything you did not get accomplished in 2019. Just get it all out there, right? Take a minute, write it down. Because if not, it's going to keep sneaking into your future, right? So write that down. Once you write that down, then I want you to take that piece of paper with all the juiciness that you didn't do. And I want you to just go like this and go, I'm complete. I'm complete that I didn't get that done. Whatever you needed to get done. Phase two is make a list of everything you did get done. What did you accomplish in 2019? Because we're not measuring the whole year. We're usually looking at the last month or we're just looking at the last thing you didn't do. But I want you to reflect since January 2019 to December 2019, what did you complete? First, you're going to be amazed, right? At like, holy crap, I did a ton of good stuff. I call this my badass list for the year. So I do my badass list. I write it down. I celebrate in it. I'm proud of myself. I toast myself a little champagne or whatever you want. You might tea or coffee. I don't know if that's you, but I like the champagne. Then I look at where's the chasm or where's the gap for 2020? Again, I don't wanna create a bunch of new product. I just wanna be more efficient in what I'm doing. You might need to create product, but let's look at efficiency. If I sold 10 more of these, 10 more units a month, what would that do to my revenue? If I sold, if I got 10 more clients, what would that do to my revenue, right? So you look at the little tiny pieces that you can really add for the next year. And I promise you, Maxwell, we can double or triple your income by doing that, not adding a new product suite, Leveraging the product suite that we have, getting a really strong marketing campaign in place, a really strong social media campaign in place, a really good lead strategy in place, and then really work that engine. So that's what I say for 2020. Awesome sauce. I love that. I love how you wrap it in a nice little bow, too. It's like it's not just the process, but here's the process. Pretty presentation here. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Awesome. Up next, we have Clarissa. Clarissa, 
how exactly did you develop your pricing model? Perfect. So in the beginning, um, Clarissa, we're going to look at what's the income you need to replace. Most of us are leaving a job and going into building a business, right? So if I'm leaving a job and I'm doing $150,000 a year, I want to look at my unit, my unit price personally. So if I do $150,000 a year, that's my income that I'm making at a current job. And I've got to replace that income. Step one. I'm going to take that $150,000 and I'm going to divide it by 2087 because 2087 is a 40 hour work week all year long. Works out to be 2087. So that gives me an hourly rate of $71.87. So that's the foundation, right? That's our break even $71.87. Now I'm now I'm looking at if you're going to do one on one consulting, if you're going to look at product. There's a couple different ways to do it. If I'm selling time, right, in consulting, one-on-one -on -one consulting, group consulting, my minimum per hour in order to replace my $150,000 a year is double that because I have to pay Uncle Sam and Uncle Sam wants his piece. So I've got to really incorporate my taxes and my cost of goods, meaning you're going to build a website, you're going to hire Marcus, you might take a class with me, there's going to be business expenses. So now I'm going to take that same $71.87 and times it by two. And now I get $143.74. Is it making sense so far? I'm recording this so we can go back. Then the second thing I want to do is look at, am I going to do the highest income producing activity for you right now is your time. So one-on-one, -on -one, service-based. So if I know that your service base has to be $143 an hour, any project I take on, if I'm going to take on consulting clients, let's say I'm going to take on a consulting client. I personally, for me, um, I have, there's a capacity issue, but I know I cannot change your life in under six months. So I don't even work with anybody under a year anymore. Like if you're not committed for a year, I'm not the right coach for you. Because I get in, I roll up my sleeves, we look at every piece of your business. But let's say you're just going to work with somebody for six months. And let's say you're going to do two calls a month for six months or two sessions a month for six months. So that's 12 sessions. I'm gonna take that 12 sessions, I'm gonna times it by my $143. And now that says $1,724.92. So minimum for those 12 sessions, I have to charge $2,000 for that client. Or does it make sense? Does, it, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So that's one way to look at your pricing. The second way to look at your pricing, right? So if you're selling things, units, baubles, things, we have to look at, so you would first have to meet with your marketer. Now it sounds silly, but your marketer is going to tell you how many leads they can get in and from the leads, how many conversions we can get. Because if you don't have a database, we got to get a database. How are you going to get a database? Your marketer, right? So you want to look at if I'm going to create a product and I need to make, we've come to the conclusion we need to bring in gross 300,000 to pay yourself 150,000, which is your job. Clear? Then I'm going to meet with my marketer. Marcus has a formula. If we spend $1,000 in ad spend, we're going to get 20 leads. Out of those 20 leads, we're going to convert 5% of them. So out of 5% of those 20 leads, that is one sale, right? So then we'll go, okay. If I'm going to sell one for every thousand dollars I spend, I've got to look at how many of those products do I need to come in. So we're not going to make any money. So if you if you have no product, you're not do not start a forty nine dollar product because you're not going to make money. There's no way you're going to pay your. There's no way we're going to generate three hundred thousand dollars on forty nine dollars because I would have to sell three hundred thousand divided by forty nine is 6,122. Now, if we look at the conversion that I just said with Marcus, I'm only getting one sell for those 20 leads. That's a lot of leads. That's a lot of thousands of dollars I gotta get in to sell a $49 product. It would be better to start with a minimum product suite of 547 or 997. So if I'm doing $300,000 divided by 997, I have to sell 300 units a year. Divide that by 12. I got to sell 25 units a month. 
to make my 300,000 at 997. So it's gonna be a marketing campaign, it's gonna be a speaking campaign, but it all starts with the top line to go how much money do I need to bring in based on my overhead, not based on Marcus's, not based on Susie's, based on your overhead. And that's how we start pricing it. In the book, Power Your Profits, I give you something called the base price worksheet. The base price worksheet, I just walk you through that template of what are your expenses, what are your profits, how many units, how many units do we need to sell, right? So that you can really map that out and handhold you through that process. <laughs> Did you just do a snap, like an around the world slap, like a drop the mic snap? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. These are some great questions you guys have submitted. So please keep them coming. Um, this is uh, this is really you can tell why now she you can tell why we call her the profit coach, why she is the profit coach is this is just amazing. And a lot of times we don't think about the underneath the surface, the process that it takes. We don't think about these components, but this is really like I told her the other day when we were doing uh, doing our session, like this is gold nuggets. I hope you guys have your pail and that you are collecting these gold nuggets. I'm envious of you all right now because I wish I could take notes. I was like, oh, that's good. I need to take notes, but I will be rewriting this and taking plenty of notes. All right, so up next we have Tangia um, or Tangia. There's a, an, an accent above the S, so Tangia. Can you explain more in detail about what your book is about? Yes, I can. Let me tell you what I love about this book. So this book, well, first of all, it's 20 years in the making, right? Of me building several multi-million dollar companies, right? So for myself and for my clients. And so it's all about the foundation of building a seven to eight figure business. If you do each chapter and take each chapter on, you're going to build a seven figure business, right? That's a million dollar business. Every single chapter has an assessment. So we're looking at your sales, your marketing, your operations, your finance, your mindset, right? Your leadership skills. And we're assessing you in every area. When I say we, I mean you. You're assessing yourself in every area. So I'm not saying you suck at this. You're saying you suck at it or you're saying, yay, I'm great at it, right? I love assessments because I need to see where am I at at any given time. Now, in the history of doing assessments, I personally have never got 100% in doing them. Because as your business grows, like I'm focused on right now marketing. Well, while I'm focused on marketing, sales is sales is weak right now. So I need to get a sale because I'm focusing on other things in my business. So your your business is gonna go like this, right? In the beginning, you'll not have anything in place, but that's good. I'm gonna show you every system you need to put in place inside your business. Then each chapter is broken down and giving you the tools and the it that you need to grow that, expand that, and leverage that. So it's a roadmap and a financial blueprint to hitting a seven-figure business. Not the ideas, not the concepts. It's the it and the strategy to build a seven-figure business. And that, my friend, is the book. I love that. Is that, a, is that, is that where I got the snap from? Was that from you? I don't know. We probably got it from each other. I love that. But that's that's awesome. And I love that distinction. It's the roadmap. You do hear all the time about people and, you know, a lot of times big names, you know, and there's nothing wrong with the theory. There's nothing wrong with the motivation. If it's accompanied by, like you said, a roadmap, a plan, an action plan, an action step to help you guide you step by step to whatever it is your goal is for your business. So I love well, that you distinction. See it, you see it all the time in your business, Marcus. People go, well, you need a marketing oh, campaign. Yeah. Well, what kind of marketing campaign? I know I need a marketing campaign. Give me the most effective one for my industry, right? I know I need a financial plan. Give me one. Right? So yeah. I just did everything that I was frustrated with as a young entrepreneur. And you had to take it in bubble gum, shoestring, Band-Aid, duct tape, put it all together to go, okay, am I doing this right? To go, oh, this is for any business. I've coached crazy businesses. I've coached, coached landscape design, marketing companies, doctors, um, homeopathic doctors, um, plastic surgeons, salons and spas, in every genre, hardware companies, jewelry stores, business is business is business. It's the foundation you need to put in place. There's different indicators in every business, but business is business is business. And so looking at that to go, oh, how do I need to create? What's, what, the, what is the thing I need to create for my business? 
that I can have an amazing business that provides me with a lifestyle that my job cannot. That's the whole purpose of business is it supposed to provide us a lifestyle that a job cannot give us. I love that. And oftentimes we forget that. Remember that when uh, sometimes, as you said before, the entrepreneurship journey is this peaks and valleys. Remember that when some of those valleys come about, why we're doing this. Start with why, as Simon Tanik says. All right. Awesome. Thank you, Tangia. And if I mispronounce your name, my apologies. That actually goes for everyone on this list. If I mispronounce your name, know it is out of love. And up next, we have. Oh, it's anonymous. Okay, we have anonymous. There's no name. <laughs> You're that's like, okay. Uh, I'm like, how do you pronounce this? This looks like. Oh, it's anonymous. Okay. <laughs> um, so we uh, from anonymous, um, not the name, but anonymous. We don't know who submitted. But uh, the question is, how do you determine what product to launch and when? So very similar to uh, the previous question that I think we it was either I think it was Sienna that we talked about. Is I, I, we need to we need to launch the most highest income producing product. That would be your first product. Again, most people want to go for the low hanging fruit, and there's a ton of marketers out there that'll say, start with a forty nine dollar product. I'd rather start with a free something to get people in my database. Once I get them into my database, then I can market them to the next product that has available. Right now, the capacity. If you're a brand new business, you have time. Right. More time than money. Most of most of my clients that I work with doesn't matter if they're doing millions. Doesn't matter if they just start out. We have more time than money. So I want to look at what's the highest income producing activity that only you can do. So for Marcus, I'm just use Marcus's example because I know his business. Right. He's a marketing strategist. So the most the highest income producing activity I could do right now with Marcus is sit down and have a strategy session with clients. So that strategy session, let's say he's going to plan out my marketing calendar for the year. And I'm making I'm making numbers up. I don't know what Marcus charge. So and we're going to charge twelve thousand dollars to put the strategy together. No implementation, just the strategy. So if I take that same three hundred thousand dollars a year that I need to replace and divide that by twelve thousand, then I need to get twenty five clients for Marcus to hit his three hundred thousand. Now, from the marketing strategy at twelve thousand, then we're going to put an implementation strategy together that I'm going to have to pay a monthly fee for. So that's what I would do with Marcus to go, let's meet people that want to commit to me for a year because Marcus can't change your business in one campaign, right? We have to work together for a year to really change your business, to get the leads in, to get it consistent. And business is like a, um, like a big safe, right? Remember your padlock that you had and you're going 22, 41, 22. And if you had one little tick off, that stupid thing wouldn't open, right? Whether it was a combination lock or whether it's a safe, it won't open. And so that's the same with business. We've got to look and go and, and, and refine. Okay, is this the right pricing? Is this the right pricing? Is this the right strategy? Is this the right strategy? Right, there's no one size fits all. So every business, is there's a customization to it. There's formulas that we can work inside of. But I want to sell what's the highest income producing activity. When I'm looking at Marcus, or I'm looking at my business, or I'm looking at your business. And that's how we start product one. Then product two is what's the next level thing that I can do and sell. That's going to be either some kind of group thing or some kind of bundle thing. You never want to sell one product. You always want to sell a bundle. I don't want to just sell one book. I want to sell my companion course with the book. So the book is $28. The companion course is $2,800. Now I'm not just selling a book. I'm selling a whole foundation for the program. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Now, I have to have the book. If you are an expert in your industry, the book gives you credibility. So we're not going to make money on the $28 book. We're going to make money on the other things that we're selling with the $28 book. So if you're an author, writer, speaker, you have to have the book. But we need to create a companion product simultaneously so you can actually make a living. I love that. That's something I definitely learned from. Well, I learned a lot from you. That was one of the things I remember distinctly when I was like, oh, don't just sell the book. Have companion items with the book, a course, a program, a workshop, et cetera. Um, I think you I think you were the one that told me a book is an expensive business card. Very and, business card. Very, very. And I love that. 
<laughs> but you have to have yeah. it, right? You have to have it. Just like in, yeah. in some fields, you have to have your degree, right? It's a mm -hmm. must in order to get that kind of job. In, in, if you're any kind of authority person, I can't tell you the game changer when I wrote my first book. All of a sudden, mm -hmm. my colleagues, my peers were like, oh, you know, and it, especially if it's published by a major publisher, yeah. right? So I created my own publishing company because the publisher rejected me. <laughs> when I took my uh -huh. book to the publisher in that industry, they were like, yeah, no, we don't need your book. So I'm like, fine, I'm going to open a publishing company. So I created my own publishing company where we published all our works. We had 10 books. We had manuals. We had audios. We had videos under that publishing company. Now, the caveat is I sold that same company that told me no. I sold them my book and everything else for millions and millions of dollars. So karma. <laughs> I sold it to them anyway. <laughs> karma is so sweet. <laughs> With a nice satisfaction, I'm sure, that was had with that as well. <laughs> Very nice satisfaction. Very awesome satisfaction. sauce. Awesome sauce. Well, thank you, Anonymous. Um, up next, we have Bokeb. And Bokeb asks, since auto follow-up is impersonal and you talk about personalization and you talk since auto follow-up is impersonal and you talk about personalization earlier, don't these two contradict? No, not at all. Right. It's all in the language and how you say, right. So you can tell I I'm kind of funny. I'm kind of quirky. So my follow-up is kind of fun and kind of quirky. If I'm doing a custom event, I'll come home, do a video and say, thank you. It was so nice to meet you at um, the summit, the business summit. Loved have loved pouring into you. You know, if you need and I would write something about if you'd love to get more of this information, get a free download, get a free this, come see me here. And so the customization is in the video. Then I'll send that to my marketing team and my marketing team sends it out right inside of my programs. I'm speaking the way that I speak inside of my auto follow ups. So I'm quirky. I'm fun. I'm going to say juicy a lot. I'm going to say possibility, passion. All these words are like my language. They wouldn't be somebody else's, right? So you want to speak in your own language. You can't cut and paste somebody else's copy. I think that's when it gets impersonal is when you're just doing, I, I love templates. I love forms because they give you a place to start, but really put your own voice in it and your own language in it. And anytime you can do a video, anytime you can add that into your email marketing, better. Because now they get to see you, feel you. You still have to have the copy underneath because some people don't want to watch a video. They just want to read. So let's give it to them both ways. Let's do a short little video and then let's do the word as well. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Vocab. Great question and great answer, Susie. That's awesome. Uh, it's a right along lines of what we believe as well. So I love that. And we have a request actually for you to repeat the steps of the 2019 assessment that you said earlier. The, um, the oh, I guess Maxwell's question is what they're asking. What was the best way to assess your 2019 in preparation for 2020 and whatever the so it wasn't the 10 step assessment, whatever that assessment that. Um, yeah. So yeah, repeat what, that yeah. Okay. what I said was first write down everything you did not accomplish in 2019, because that's going to be present for mm -hmm. you. You're going to beat yourself up like I looked at. Oh, I didn't. Um, I didn't start my podcast. I didn't hit my revenue goal. I didn't get as many people in my database. I didn't like all the stuff that you didn't do personal and business, right? I didn't lose the weight I wanted to. I didn't go to the gym. I didn't whatever. I didn't go on vacation. Like what are all the things you didn't do? Then you're going to take that list and you're going to rip it up, right? So you can be complete with it. Now what's really fun is if you rip it up and throw it in your fireplace, that's really fun. Because then you just watch it go in smoke and that, that feels good. Like, I am done with that. Because the reality is we can't do anything about it. We didn't get it done. And mm -hmm. I believe that if we didn't get it done, it wasn't a priority. Right? If it was a priority, you would get it done. Mm -hmm. So to go, okay, I'm going to let that go. Then the second list is write down really your celebration, or I call it my badass list. So what's my badass list? What's all the things that I did do? So I didn't hit my revenue goal, but I hit 1.3 million. Right. I was on 8000 publicity outlets this year. We grew our database from nothing to ninety six hundred people. We grew our social media from five thousand 
to over 250,000 people, right? So we launched this massive brand. We had massive success. I lost 13 pounds. I bought our second home and I bought a lake, a river home, home on the river, right? So I, I did amazing things. Went to Costa Rica next week. So I, I did finish the year with my vacation, <laughs> right? Like right in there. Like I got to get my vacation in, right in there, right? <laughs> Doing it the last week of the year, but I'm going. <laughs> so it's kind of a cheater vacation. It's the last week and the first week. So I kind of hit two goals in one. <laughs> so then celebrate what you did do. Right. And like I said, I like to toast it with champagne to go, ah, I did great. And then that sets me up for 2020. What do I want to create in 2020? Now, I said, we don't want to create a bunch of new products. You might need to. But my goal this year is I don't want to create a bunch of new product. I want to leverage the stuff that I already have. So many entrepreneurs, because we're creative, that we're like, girl, <laughs> what is it? We just keep creating. Stop creating and start refining. Refine, mm. fill, and convert. Refine, fill, and convert. So that we're leveraging everything that we've done. And once you've got that into a machine, then you can launch another product. That is amazing. I love that. I'm actually glad you, um, thank you for, who asked that question here in the chat? I'll see who asked that, but thank you for that. because. And we also typed it there in the chat box for you as well, um, those steps to the 2019 assessment. I know that I'm going to have to rewatch this replay because I want to take some notes. So uh, I will also be watching this replay so I can just take notes, not moderate and not do all these things that I'm trying to do simultaneously. And I'm sure I butchered that word as well, just like I'm butchering your names. And I can't butcher this name because I know how to pronounce it. And this question comes from Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, you say compared what did I? Oh, did I actually pronounce her name right? Mm -hmm. I can try to mispronounce it. I won't do that. <laughs> Jennifer asks, uh, you say comparison is the thief of all joy. How will you know where you are and how you are doing if you don't compare? Well, I think it's not looking at comparison in you. It's comparison to others, right? I see it with the younger generation now with social media. They're all comparing their car, their lifestyle, their party, their excited moments. Come on. The reality is our life isn't social media, right? We have ebbs and flows. So don't compare your start to my middle, right? I've had five other businesses, right? So I have different experience. So even though this year I launched this new business this year, it's not my first year in business. It's my 25th year in business. So of course, I'm gonna hit the on-ramp faster than somebody else. Like my students are like, Susie, we started at the same time, but you just blew us out of the water. I'm like, no, 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 we did no. My expertise is business and planning and strategy, right? You should, I should have hit seven figures the first year because I already know what I'm doing. So that's the comparison piece is compare yourself to yes, where you are and go, what can I improve upon? How can I improve this year? Look at other businesses that are similar and go, what are they doing that I'm not doing? I'm always looking. So I had a VIP day with one of my mentors, Lisa Sasevich. Now sales wise, I think I had I made more money in my businesses than she did, but leverage wise and how she did her events, every single event she was closing a million to, I had a VIP day with her. Like, you know something I don't, right? I wanna, what is, what's your structure? What's your foundation? What's your system? So I'm not comparing like good, bad, I'm better than you. I'm looking at her efficiency and going, you're way more efficient than I was, what is it that you're doing, right? So I always believe that hiring someone that's 10 steps ahead of you can propel your learning curve and shave seven to 10 years off your learning curve, right? If they're credible, you have to do your credibility, you have to do your due diligence, don't just, because somebody says they're great, throw your money, right? Go show me some results that you've created for other people, right? The proof's in the pudding. So it's their own business, it was so funny. I had a, another colleague want me to sign up for this mastermind and pay $25,000. I'm like, okay, well, how much money are you making? They're like two fifty. dollars <laughs> Yeah, what? No, what are you going to teach me? Or I've built two $10 million companies. Like, you don't even know what I know. Like, I'm sure there's some good stuff there, but I'm not going to pay $25,000. That makes no sense. Now, I have another colleague that she runs a $25 million company. I would pay her because I've not been there. So 
you want to really look at who am, who am I leveraging? Who am I looking at? Who am I emulating? Not imitating, emulating. And what are the best practices that they can bring to me? Versus going, I want Marcus's car. I want Marcus's dream life on social media. It looks so sexy. That's the comparison. Because that's not true. I find most people with money do not flaunt their money. People that don't have money, they're flaunting their cars and their jewelry and their money to go look at me, look at me, look at me, validate me. I don't show any of that stuff. I, it feels obnoxious to me, right? To go, oh, like if, I, if it happens to show it, like my social media team's always like, show them their stuff. I'm like, mm, that, that, that feels braggadocious. I don't wanna be bragging, right? I wanna have a humble heart. Wow, I love that. That is amazing, Susie. Thank you so, so very much for that. And I see that we, some of you have commented that she is frozen. Um, you did freeze a little, oh, you're unfrozen now on my end. And if you can comment still in the chat, if um, there's an issue, let me know so we can uh, take care of that. But Susie, this is, that was awesome. Your input, your information and your perspective on everything is just so refreshing and so new. And um, I know we have a million and 10 more questions uh, that we can ask Susie Carter. And um, I have managed to snag Susie for some more Small Biz Better Summit. So she will be joining us again in January. And we're going to try and snag her for a couple of more even after January as well, because you guys love Susie and for great reasons. She is just amazing, just absolutely amazing. And so, uh, so Susie Carter, in closing, anything you want to leave this Q&A session with for uh, the last Small Biz Better Summit of 2019. Mm. Of <laughs> yeah, I want to say be bold, be outrageous, be courageous. Don't be afraid to dream big. Don't be afraid to play full out. Don't listen to the naysayers. Listen to the tribe and the community that supports you. Put your plan together. Put your plan. Get a nice foundation in place and then be flexible. Fluid and flexible about what happens. Don't be afraid to fail. Failure taught me how to rise again. So be willing to play big or go home. <laughs> I appreciate you. I appreciate you, Marcus. Thank you always for your leadership and your commitment to your community. Thank you for being a humble servant, always a humble servant. You're a brilliant man and a brilliant marketer, and I appreciate what you do for our community. Oh. Thank you so much. And we appreciate you. This is absolutely amazing. So many great nuggets. I will be rewatching this session to capture all of those great nuggets that Susie just dropped for us in abundance. So we can't thank you. Can't thank you enough. And again, check out the book, PowerYourProfitsBook.com. Uh, there's uh, several free items and several free things that you can acquire there at PowerYourProfitsBook.com. Profits is plural. So definitely check those out and follow the uh, trajectory as we launch another her number 10 best-selling book this is so exciting so exciting to see you doing these great things and please keep spreading your brilliance to the world the world needs you the world needs exactly what you're giving and the world just needs more of you so any way we can continue to support you in that journey please continue to let us know um and you're getting great rave reviews from the chat everybody's saying oh my gosh she's amazing yes we know um, we have kind of our next speaker uh, who's uh, coming up saying, uh, tell Susie Derek Butts said hello. What's um, up, Derek? And, uh, <laughs> That's my brother. <laughs> yeah, Derek is actually our next speaker uh, coming up at uh, the top of the hour. So all of you who are here with us right now, uh, there's no need for you to do anything. Our next session will start automatically uh, when, um, when it's time for uh, Mr. Co Coach Derek Butts to go on. So you can just stay right here. We'll just have another, for those of you who attended our pre-party, we're gonna have our little after party just behind the scenes, which is basically us just, yeah, doing this, dancing, uh, being us, being funny, being- That's called the funny dance. Money, money, money. <laughs> And the money dance. Y'all should have saw Susie's version of the money dance earlier. She was doing the floss and she was doing it all. I was like, oh, that's, that was great. And so uh, so if you're um, ready for the next session, just stay right where you are. We'll have a little after party right here. Um, and 
uh, there's still time to have your friends register for the session. We have a lot of great live Q&A for Coach Derek Butts, who's coming up as well, uh, who will also continue to uh, uh, deliver some Q&A, as well as myself. Uh, I'll be participating on the marketing questions of the Q&A that's coming up, and Derek Butts will be uh, communicating on the sales part of the questions that are coming up in the next session. So you're getting um, a lot more Q&A. Um, Susie, thank you again so much for joining us. We're about to stop this recording, um, but again, Additional questions, send them in. We will get to them on future summits uh, as time permits. There's a lot of questions we couldn't get to today, but as many, as many as we humanly possibly can submit them. You heard how great the questions were today. Uh, keep those coming. So thank you so much. Small Biz Better. We will see you in the very next session. Thank Bye you, Susie. And thank all of you.